PenFed Credit Union, we believe we all deserve to do better with our money. So we have great auto loan rates on new and used vehicles in every town in the USA. PenFed's got great rates for everyone. Good morning, America. Inauguration countdown. Just one day until Donald Trump takes the oath of office, the president-elect celebrates at black tie events overnight in D.C., then stops at his hotel. As he prepares for the biggest speech of his life, will his cabinet be confirmed by the time he's sworn in? Breaking news, the urgent search for 30 people missing after an avalanche buries a ski resort in Italy. Snow blasting through windows and doors. Rescue crews on the scene digging for survivors, at least two people making it out alive. Also breaking overnight, a massive fire destroying a high-rise overseas, collapsing in just seconds. On live TV, dozens of firefighters killed on the scene. Hundreds more missing right now. And an ABC News exclusive, the Trump children about to climb to new heights of power. Speaking out on the eve of their father's inauguration, Ivanka reacting to those saying she'll be the real first lady. There's one first lady and she'll do remarkable things. And the Trump sons are how their father will change in office as they prepare to spend their first night in the White House. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. And good morning, America. That's right, Michael. Tomorrow night, the entire Trump family will spend the night in the White House. A lot of change ahead for them. Let's take a live look at the Capitol right now. Beautiful. Noon tomorrow, Donald J. Trump will take the oath of office, become America's 45th president. Boy, that is gorgeous. Right? That is gorgeous sight. Can you imagine how excited they must be? And the president-elect, he posted this photo showing him writing his inauguration speech in Mar-a-Lago over the holidays, and he was saying with the caption, looking forward to Friday. But what about the Obamas? They are preparing to say goodbye to the White House. First Lady Michelle Obama shared this photo last night, but the message, being your First Lady, has been the honor of a lifetime. From the bottom of my heart, Thank you. That's a beautiful shot as well. Absolutely. The president did his final press conference he did. yesterday. Quiet day in the White House today, just lunch with the vice president. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be much more on the inauguration. We're going to have much more on that in just a moment. First, though, that breaking news, an avalanche bearing a mountain hotel in Italy. The search for survivors is on right now, and ABC's Lama Hassan has all the latest details for us from London. Lama. And good morning to you, Robin. Yeah, a harrowing rescue effort is underway right now after four powerful earthquakes hit central Italy on Wednesday, unleashing an avalanche. Rescuers reporting they received a text overnight saying, quote, help, help, we are dying of cold. And this morning, those rescuers desperately searching for survivors, survivors saying they're calling out, but no one is answering. This morning, the first images of the destructive avalanche, the sheer force of it pushing snow through the windows of the four-star Rigo Piano Hotel, shattering glass and blocking rooms, stopping rescuers from going in. This man, one of at least two survivors, saved this morning. Authorities saying at least 30 people are still missing, with reports of several dead. They reached the place and saved two people. The chief of Italian civil protection says now they're working to bring other means of transportation. They're checking the conditions that are prohibitive even for technical rescue. Alpine rescue teams rushing to the scene, the hotel by helicopter and on foot after initially being blocked by fallen trees and snow overnight. The popular ski resort located about 30 miles from the coastal city of Pescara. A series of strong earthquakes hit the region on Wednesday, including one with a 5.7. Well, with many feared still trapped under all of that snow, it's a really nice time to reach them. Teams with vital rescue equipment are at this hour still trying to reach the scene. Robin? All right, Mama, thank you. And of course, we'll stay on top of the story. Yeah, such a desperate story. Latest now on the Trump inauguration, just one day away. And the president will spend less than several celebrations in the Capitol before stopping off at his own hotel for dinner. There he is. He'll be headlining a concert at the Lincoln Memorial later today. ABC Cecilia Vega in Washington. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. You're right. Just one day, Donald Trump has been flying from New York here to Washington every night to attend his parties. But as of tonight, he's here in Washington for good. Donald Trump landing in his soon to be home, waving and hitting the inaugural party circuit, crossing town in a motorcade. Exclusive black tie dinners, including one for his 
Vice President Mike Pence. And off with, with the stop at Trump's Washington Hotel, just a few blocks away from your home, the White House. Inside, Trump was showered with applause. Now, preparing for his biggest audience yet. A photo of himself at what he calls his winter White House, Mar-a-Lago. On his desk next to him, a bronze eagle. That speech about 20 Trump has been studying past inaugural addresses and practicing daily. The themes uniting the country and America first. Aides calling it very personal. The first line is thanking everybody, all of the presidents, and uh, including, by the way, President Obama and Michelle, who have been absolutely nice. Trump also ready for the big day, tweeting out the official invitation. The amazing journey is just getting started. She and the whole Trump family are expected to spend Trump's first night as president at the White House. Barron and all of my children uh, will be in the White House, which is tradition. But who will not be participating in the festivities? More than 60 House Democrats, never before in history, have so many skipped a swearing in. Asking for his birth certificate, but he has to build legitimacy. Hillary Clinton. If she can go, and she's going. Say, why can't you? But she was the first lady, and as the wife she's of Bill the woman Clinton. who ran against him. Yeah, I know, and it's, it's going to be hard for her. And Donald Trump is expected to use the Lincoln Bible during his swearing in while taking the oath of office. Only two presidents have done that: President Obama and Lincoln himself. George, that big concert, and Trump will be speaking on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Then he hopes to hit the ground writing, running right after he takes the oath. Yeah, this has been a promise of Donald Trump's. He has said that he will issue some executive orders. We expect those to largely, uh, the immediate at least, to largely uh, reverse some President Obama. We do know now that on Friday, immediately after taking office, he will issue four to five executive actions. The first one, though, we're told, George, will be largely procedural, things like security for the first family. Yeah, that is a tradition, Cecilia. Thank you very much. Let's move over to Capitol Hill now, where Trump cabinet... Of contentious hearings. This morning, former Texas Governor Rick Perry up for energy secretary will be in the hot seat, and our congressional correspondent Mary Bruce is tracking it all from the Capitol. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Georgia. The whirlwind of hearings continues with a familiar face. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry will be making his case to lead the agency he once wanted to eliminate and once famously forgot. That's a move that now, according to his prepared remarks, he's expected to say he regrets. Also, this morning, Democrats are expected to take Secretary nominee Steve Mnuchin, manager and Sachs executive, is under fire for his role in the housing crisis. He's been accused of rushing to foreclose on homeowners. And, and, and Mary, there were some delays with some nominees getting their papers in. Democrats also slowing this process down a bit as well. So there won't be many cabinet secretaries in place tomorrow after the oath. Yeah, George, no votes have been scheduled yet, but the Senate Majority Leader suggests that Democrats will only allow three to go through on day one. General Mattis for Defense, Congressman Pompeo for CIA Director, and General Kelly for DHS. These are three picks critical to national security and also three of Donald Trump's less controversial nominees. But it is far fewer than what President Obama had in 2009 when seven of his picks were confirmed on the first day, 13 by the end of the first week. And George. there will not be a secretary. Secretary of State tomorrow. Okay, Mary Bruce, thanks very much. Let's go over to Robin. And George, we're going to bring in Koki Roberts for more on the inauguration and how President-elect Trump is preparing for this historic event. Always good to see you, Koki. Wonderful, Robin. Donald Trump has said he's going to keep it short, the speech, and you say that's probably a good that's thing. That's a good thing to do, mm -hmm. because uh, a long speech nobody wants to listen to. It gets very cold, and, you know, the truth is, I was thinking back of all the inaugurations mm -hmm. that I've either been to or written about, and I can only remember four speeches, and two were at Lincoln. I was not there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Kennedy, uh, ask not what your country, and, and, um, and uh, Franklin Roosevelt, mm -hmm. you have nothing to fear but fear it's so other than that, it, they're not exactly memorable. Well, what are you ex exactly expecting from, from Donald Trump? His, his, his tone and his words, what do you expect him to say? I expect him to try to be unifying mm -hmm. to, to put people to, to, you know, who are concerned, uh, to try to put their fears to rest. Yeah, election night, we heard him give a speech that was along those lines. I think it would be the same thing, but probably better. <laughs>
Um, and he, we, he tweeted out a picture of himself saying over the holidays that he was actually working on the speech. They always do that, don't they? We always see somebody, you know, and, this, and then the speech writers say, actually, I did it. So there's always a little tension. But they between, work together. And, they do work together. Because he wants to make sure it's in his voice. And his voice. And I do think the one other thing he might do, uh, you know, throughout the campaign, we kept talking about if he's elected, he'd be the first person who's never served in public office mm -hmm. or the military. I think he might want to use that to his advantage rather than disadvantage and talk about coming to Washington fresh, owing no one anything, just you the people. He is going to be there. His predecessors are going to be there right. on the None stage. None of whom voted for him. But it is quite a moment <laughs> when you this moment in, in our in our history it's a it's huge just... moment and um, and the fact that they didn't vote for him and are going to be there is very significant because they're saying we are validating this this mm -hmm. is this is what we do in America right. we have a peaceful transfer of government in the rest of the world still you have situations where people are not willing to give over power. It's happening right now. Uh, but uh, this is this is a remarkable moment and has been uh, since 1800. A, a, a woman reporter in 1800, 1801, wrote this in our country where other places it's cause of bloodshed. Here we have uh, no dislocation. Now, that wasn't entirely true, but it was close enough. But it is a moment. <laughs> it is a moment for our country. Right. We're going to have you back, talk a little bit more Good. about some things later. But right now, let's get to Michael. All right. Thank you, Robin. Now, let's get to the latest on former President George H.W. Bush and his wife Barbara's health. Both are in the Houston area hospital this morning, and our chief White House correspondent, John Carl, has more. And, John, what do we know about their condition? Good morning, Michael. Well, both Bushes remain in the hospital this morning. It is believed to be the first time in their 72 years of marriage that both have been hospitalized at the same time. The former president was admitted back on Saturday for shortness of breath, but, and he was expected to be released actually today, but yesterday he took a turn for the worse and had to be admitted into intensive care. His spokesperson tells ABC News, quote, President Bush was admitted to the ICU to address an acute respiratory problem stemming from pneumonia. He actually had to be sedated yesterday so they could perform a procedure to clear his airway. As for Mrs. Bush, she was admitted yesterday for fatigue and for coughing. I, I, and I tell you, even before all of this, they had written a, a remarkable letter uh, to Donald Trump. This letter right here, George Bush wrote to Donald Trump, uh, was delivered to him, Trump told me uh, earlier this week. It says, my doctor says if I sit outside in January, it will likely put me six feet under. Same for Barbara, I guess we're stuck in Texas, but he said, we will be with you and the country in spirit. So although he said that he could not make the inauguration, uh, he even offered to help Donald Trump in any way possible. Trump responded with a tweet saying, looking forward to a speedy recovery for George and Barbara Bush, both hospitalized. Thank you for your wonderful letter. So uh, interesting words from the former president. And so they're not going to make the inauguration, but their son and former president George W. Bush, he was scheduled to attend the inauguration tomorrow. Is this going to change his plans? Well, we're told that as of right now, Michael, that George W. Bush and former First Lady Laura Bush still intend to be here tomorrow for the inauguration. All right. Thank you, John. And, of course, we're going to have full coverage of the inauguration. I'll be anchoring our nonstop live coverage starting at 7 a.m. Eastern right here on GMA. Continues throughout the inaugural parade all through the day. And tonight, an inside look at America's new first family as the Trumps head to Washington on a special edition of 2020. That's at 10 Eastern. We'll have a little preview coming up. Now, Amy's here with the morning's other top stories, a serious building collapse in Iran. That's right. There are some dramatic new images out this morning as a high-rise building in Tehran became engulfed in flames. Crews were battling this fire for hours when the building then suddenly in just a few seconds collapsed in a massive cloud of dust. It all happened on live television. At least 30 firefighters were killed, dozens of others injured. The tower was once the tallest building in Iran's capital. Back here in this country, the largest student loan collector is facing a lawsuit accused of cheating millions of borrowers. Navient, once part of Sally May, allegedly made it harder to repay loans by processing payments incorrectly. The lawsuit claims the company deceived borrowers at every step. And breaking overnight, a sheriff's deputy in rural North Dakota has been killed in a shootout with a suspect. This all comes one day after a police detective near Dallas was killed. Nationwide, the number of officers shot on duty has risen dramatically in the last year. 
And police in New Hampshire say they cannot believe the driver of this Honda Civic was able to walk away from this crash. They say the car lost control and slid underneath, you see it there, under a tanker truck and got pinned against a concrete barrier. The driver somehow managed to climb out of the window. Well, the newest members of baseball's Hall of Fame have just been announced. Ivan Pudge Rodriguez broke down when he got the call, telling him he had been selected. Look at that. He will be joined by Tim Raines and Jeff Bagwell at this summer's induction. Congratulations to all. And finally, if you're in the home, uh, in the business for a new home. How about this mega mansion in Bel Air? Take a look at that. It is the most expensive home ever listed in the United States. It includes 12 bedrooms, 21 bathrooms. There you see a 40 seat movie theater and a candy room featuring what the LA Times describes, as you see it there, towering cylinders of sweets. It can all be yours for $250 million. It also comes with a $30 million car collection and seven full-time staff members that the current owner will pay for two years. A helicopter, you know, too. The, the crazy thing is, I've been in that home. Really? That used to be my lot. I sold a developer that lot. Are you kidding me? And I regret it now. <laughs> oh, my God. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. Well, it can be, you can buy it back for $250 million. He's offered, and I said, well, I have to ask George first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a story. But uh, all right. Thank, thank you, Amy. And um, now to the backlash that's growing this morning over the new movie, A Dog's Purpose. After TMZ posted this video showing a German Shepherd being forced into rushing waters, and Gio Benitez joins us with the story. And good morning, Gio. Good morning, Michael. Listen, it doesn't matter who you are. If you love dogs, this video is hard to watch. It went viral overnight, and now it seems everyone is demanding answers from the writer of the story to the film's top voice actors. Uh, pull over. There's a ton of traffic. Time after time, our furry four legged friends. Daddy have stolen the show on the silver screen. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. But the latest Hollywood film to focus on man's best friend is now coming under fire. Okay, ready? Go! The soon to be released A Dog's Purpose being investigated after this video obtained by TMZ became public. In the video, a German shepherd named Hercules appears to be struggling to stay out of a pool of rushing water. A handler seemingly trying to force the dog in. Just got to in. The dog then seems to go underwater. Got it, got it, got it. Before being rescued, the response to the video swift. PETA calling for a boycott of the film. American Humane, an organization that ensures animal safety on set, hiring an investigator to look into the matter and suspending the safety rep who worked on that film. And actor Josh Gad, who provides the voice for the dog in A Dog's Purpose, taking to Twitter, saying, I have reached out to the production team and studio to ask for an explanation for these disturbing images. And while the movie studio is not commenting, producers on the film speaking to TMZ saying, on the day of the shoot, Hercules did not want to perform the stunt portrayed on the tape, so the Amblin production team did not proceed with filming that shot. But the stunt seems to have been completed eventually. The Amblin production company telling TMZ, Hercules is happy and healthy. But this morning, many questioning that troubling video. And those producers at Amblin, Steven Spielberg's production company, say the stunt had been rehearsed so Hercules would be comfortable with the water, but on the day of that shoot, Hercules just wasn't having it. Do you blame the dog? Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. Look dangerous. A lot of that questions. Too. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ginger? All right, so let's talk about Sacramento because 63 mile per hour wind gusts was recorded there, and you can see the trees that's lifted up this camper. This is all with the first of many storms to come for the West. I-90 in Washington State shut down for more than 80 or up to 80 miles. So North Bend to Ellensburg and still shut down at last check. And then this is southern Washington state where avalanches are closing different parts of the roads. Much more coming and especially for the south Los Angeles into the mountains could get up to nine inches through early next week. Let's get to the spring like cities brought to you by CarMax. CarMax offers a five day money back guarantee so you can return a car you've purchased for any reason within five days for a full refund. And this is not some kind of an advertising gimmick. It's just the right thing to do, like saving puppies in a hurricane or helping a tortoise across a busy road or not eating somebody's yogurt when it is clearly marked with their name. I know it was you, Bill. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. To recap, five day guarantee, puppies, tortoises, yogurt. 
Enjoy the spring like weather for today. Temperatures well above average, getting to 55 for the DC Metro, but it's all coming to an end as we head into Friday. Here it is on our map next.